And while the overall survival trended a little better with chemotherapy in the Exxon 21 mutations, it was interesting to see that afatinib still conferred a significantly improved response rate and an improvement in progression-free survival, which was of similar magnitude as was seen in the Exxon 19. Any thoughts on why that would not translate into an overall survival, survival difference? Well, it's a little bit hard to speculate in that regard because if you look into the key question is that how long do they get exposure to the TKI? I mean, the chance is the fact that, you know, um, in the control arm, okay, they got about 60 to 70 percent of them actually received TKI as a second line treatment. And then similarly, in the TKI afetinib arm, they got about 70% of them receiving the chemotherapy, which is supposed to be in balance. But one other point that we may have ignored, in the study arm of afetinib arm, after the exposure of chemotherapy, about 44% of them also have further TKI. So to me, it may be not just afetinib, it may be the duration of exposure to the TKI. 